Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at oral cancer. Cancer of the mouth really accounts for approximately about 2% of all malignant tumours in Northern Europe and the US. But worldwide, it can account up to about 30-40%, to 40%, and especially, particularly in, in the Indian subcontinent. Most of the oral cancers that are diagnosed are usually squamous cell carcinoma in origin. Worldwide, it's actually the sixth most commonest form of cancer-related deaths in the world. There's approximately nearly about 3,000 new cases of cancer that are registered per year in the UK, and that number is increasing, unfortunately. Oral cancer is preventable in 75% of the cases, and the mortality rate is just over 50%. UK has probably the best survival figures for diagnosed oral cancers at all stages in terms of survival. So I'm going to be sharing with you a mnemonic towards the end. I will allow you to recall the classification and the signs and symptoms of oral cancer. We'll also be looking at the clinical pr presentations of oral cancer and provide you a mnemonic at the end. I will also look at the histopathology of oral cancer and also provide you with a mnemonic that will outline what the histological changes are in oral cancer. We'll also be looking at the TNM classification and how it is involved in staging of oral cancer. So the main site is usually the floor of the mouth. That's usually the most commonest single site. It is mainly within the gutter areas. So the floor of the mouth, the retromolar region, and also the lateral border of the tongue. It's much more common in males than females, although the difference is much less because of the changes in smoking habits. The age that it normally occurs is normally within the sixth and the seventh decade, but it's increasing incidence in younger patients and patients who do not smoke. And this could be due to an increase in HPV. So what are some of the causes or the etiological factors in oral cancer? Well, lip cancer is due to the exposure of sunlight as with skin cancer. We know that if you live more closer to the equator, the chance of getting lip cancer really doubles every 250 miles near the equator. A combination of alcohol consumption and tobacco increases the risk factor and is known to have a synergistic effect. The most clear-cut etiological factor is the chewing of tobacco and palm, betel nut chewing. There's also a, quite a strong correlation or link to HPV, in particular, HPV type 16 and 18. These can also lead to oropharyngeal squamous cell carcinomas. Other factors such as immunosuppression, renal transplant or HIV patients increase the risk of these tumours as well. So what are the some of the clinical appearances or the clinical manifestations of oral cancer? Well, I'm going to share a mnemonic with you and the mnemonic is Dr. Flu Plus. Dr. Flu Plus. And I'll be going through this mnemonic uh, in a few minutes. But before that, I would like to describe to you what the, some of the clinical manifestations of oral cancer is. It's usually a, an ulcer that has appeared. Most commonly, it's painless. It's been there for usually more than three weeks. You could have an area of leukoplakia associated with it. It could be a combination of redness and leukoplakia, which is known as erythroleukoplakia. You could have regional and local lymphad lymphadenopathy associated with the lump due to metastatic spread to the cervical chain. Any, any lesion that is present within the mouth that has been there for more than three weeks should be considered to be malignant unless proven otherwise. These lesions are usually painless and they tend to become painful usually at a late stage and this normally presents as a late feature. You may have autologia accompanying pain from the tongue or as a result of an oropharyngeal tumour. The ulcer is usually described as a firm with raised edges with a, with a necrotic appearance, damage to the re uh, localised tissues. It may be indurated, could be quite inflamed and has a granular base and it's usually quite fixed and firm in relation to the surrounding tissues. You may also get mobility of the teeth, you may get paresthesia, you may get ill-fitting dentures as some of the complaints that may originate from a patient. So in order to help us remember the clinical manifestations of oral cancer, let's, let's go through a mnemonic called Dr. Flu Plus. Dr. Flu Plus, so D equals destruction of localized tissues. R 
is raised margins. F, the lesion could be fungating. It could be very firm and fixed. You could have loss of function, so you may get paresthesia, for example. E, you might have a combination of erythroleukoplakia as well as erythroplakia. W, you might have a white patch, which is manifestation of leukoplakia. P, it's painless, usually in its early manifestation, but can become painful at a later point. L, you can have lymphadenopathy. Your lymph nodes can become enlarged. They can become quite rubbery, fixed, and quite painless. U, it's an ulcer. It's a non-healing ulcer. S, you can get systemic features such as cachexia, weight loss, B symptoms. That is a mnemonic to help you remember the clinical presentations of a tumour. Also, I will outline what are some of the causes or what are the etiological factors of oral cancer. And we've been through this before, but this mnemonic here would be great for you to remember. It's called VAT on CDs. So V equals viruses. So a patient who may be HIV can have an increased risk of developing tumours. A. Alcohol. We know that alcohol and tobacco have a synergistic effect. T. Tobacco. Also, recurrent trauma to an area can lead to changes within the cells that can lead to uh, malignancy. O. Ozone. The sun, for example. Um, constant exposure of the sun can lead to tumours occurring around the lips. N. Nutritional deficiency, deficiencies. Patients who are severely nutritionally deprived can lead to pre-malignant conditions. That can lead to malignancy as well. Example, P Patterson Kelly syndrome. C. Candida. Candida can also lead to oral cancers such as candidal hyperplastic leukoplakia. This is actually a pre-malignant condition. And then obviously we've mentioned diet. D equals diet and S equals smoking. So when you're describing a lesion or an ulcer, it's very important to describe this in a very systematic manner. So what I tend to use is a mnemonic. Site, size, shape. Color, contour, consistency. Base, edge, discharge. SSS, CCC, bed. And this will be a great way for you to remember the mnemonic when describing a lesion. We can also look at the histopathology of oral cancer and I want you to remember a mnemonic called high ANA. H equals high mitotic activity. I equals invasion into the underlying connective tissue and causing an inflammatory response. A equals abnormal mitosis. N equals nuclear pleomorphism. N equals nuclear hyperchromatism, and A equals abnormal nucleocytoplasm ratio. Once we've described the cancer as a oral cancer, we've reached a diagnosis, it's very important to be able to actually stage that particular tumour in order to determine what the, what the type of treatment that would be provided. So we use a TNM classification. So T is where there's a primary tumour, N is for nodes, and M is for any metastases. So T is a primary tumour. T1 is a tumour less than 2 centimetres in diameter. T2 is a tumour between 2 and 4 centimetres in diameter. T3 is a tumour greater than 4 centimetres in diameter. And T4 is a tumour which is quite massive and invading other structures. N, there's no cervical. N0, there's no cervical lymph nodes. N1, there's a single node less than 3 centimetres. N2, there's a single node between 3 and 6 centimetres. So that's known as N2A. Multiple nodes is N2B. And if there's contralateral lymph node involvements, then it's N2C. N3 is a node which is greater than 6 centimetres. M is metastases. So M0 is zero metastases. M1 is where there's distant metastasis present. So what is the survival for patients with oral cancer? Well, this actually clearly depends on the site and the staging of the uh, tumour itself. Prognosis for stage 1 is 
is more than 85% and for stage 4 is 10% over 5 years with considerable comorbidity. The presence or the absence of extracapsular spread of tumours in, in metastatic survival nodes is the most common single prognostic factor. Nodal involvement decreases cure rates by about, approximately by 50%. We looked at the histopathology and we've shared a mnemonic. So the histopathology is, as we said, is mostly squamous cell carcinoma. They show basically deep invasion of the tissues with increase in cellular pleomorphism and nucleus staining. There will also be a lymphocytic response and that can increase the prognostic value. Squamous cell carcinomas do spread via the local infiltration or the lymphatic system and the late spread is usually by the bloodstream. Other tumours that can also affect the mouth are sarcomas, fibrosarcomas, rhabdomyosarcomas, osteosarcomas, multiple myelomas, salivary gland tumours, melanomas. I hope you found this presentation useful. If you have, then please kindly like and subscribe to our channel. It really benefits the channel and we will be bringing more mnemonics to you in the future. Thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye.